Now it's time to bring Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Sportsvav home. Welcome, welcome back to Mission Control. Uh, you're here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where the team here is getting ready and following along for the uh, return of MS-13 Soyuz back to uh, landing in Kazakhstan at 3:12 a.m. Central Time today. Preparations have uh, been going on. Uh, since they undocked from the International Space Station at 11.50, and they are now heading towards a 2.18 a.m. Central Time deorbit burn to get ready for that landing, which will uh, bring them home just southeast of Jeskwizgan, Kazakhstan, wrapping up a record-setting mission. This will be the last orbit of the Earth for the Expedition 61 crew members on board the Soyuz. For ESA's Luka Parmitano and Roscosmos's Alexander Skortsov, who launched in this Soyuz on July 20th, this will be their 3,216th orbit. But for NASA's Christina Cook, who arrived on the space station on March 14th, she'll land today having orbited the Earth 5,248 times and traveled 139 million miles, enough to have journeyed to the moon and back 291 times. Can see some of the additional accomplishments she racked up on her mission here. Again, uh, 139 million miles traveled, in addition to, of course, setting records for the most time uh, in space on a single space flight for a female, seventh all time record for a U.S. astronaut on the endurance list, and 50th on the all time for all astronauts. 328 days is enough time to get a lot done. So next we're going to take a look back at some of Christina Cook's memorable moments. Without a doubt, my most memorable day was day one. With the assistance of Space Station Commander Oleg Kononenko, Christina Cook of NASA, the first one through the hatch, being greeted by her. That was the day that I have seared in my memory. Visions when I first arrived here, opening the hatch, seeing some of my best friends on the other side, floating through, seeing my first glimpses of the actual interior of the space station after having traveled here for six hours on a small Soyuz spacecraft, that it actually exists for the betterment of humanity, doing science and exploring, that it was real and that I got to live here. I'm very privileged to have that as one of my favorite memories. The surprise that I've uncovered is the human body and mind's ability to adapt to any situation. I sometimes joke that before Jessica got here and before I, you know, heard her all the time explain, exclaiming about how exciting and fun it was to float, I think I had actually forgotten that I was floating. The human mind just has an ability to really accommodate any situation and to turn it into normal. So, for example, the fact that we can just work right on the ceiling like this and not even know the difference between the two. So it's really been an exciting and a huge surprise to see that life up here can actually become normal. I'd have to say any meal that we share together is a great one. And of those, some of my favorites, I would say, would be our pizza nights. Our folks on the ground send up care packages sometimes and they'll put together a little non-perishable pizza kit. And we're able to actually make pizzas in our kind of makeshift space oven using tin foil and a little bit of creativity and seeing what everybody comes up with and sharing with each other and just something a little different, a little bit out of the norm that we actually feel like we get to prepare ourselves as opposed to just opening up uh, out of a packet. It's really special and it's a lot of fun. One really striking moment was the first time I saw my hometown in the area where I grew up, which is coastal North Carolina, and seeing those outer banks come into focus around the horizon and suddenly realizing what I was looking at was a just breathtaking moment. Some of the other favorite things I have to look at would be definitely the auroras, the northern lights and the southern lights. I spent so many years working in the Antarctic and the Arctic and seeing those auroras from below. And so to see them on a planetary scale from above is just truly mind blowing. You know, just like those memories of day one, there are a couple flashes that I'll just never ever forget. Spacewalk with Jessica Muir was just an unbelievable honor. And there were times when we looked at each other, for example, right when we came out the hatch, we caught each other's eye and we knew that 
we really were honored with this opportunity to inspire so many. And just hearing our voices talk to Mission Control and knowing that two female voices had never been on the loop, solving those problems together outside was a really special thing. As you can see, a lot accomplished in 328 days in space and a lot of excitement from the team supporting Cook from the ground. That last congratulation message there at the end came from some of the International Space Station program team members here in Houston. We'd love to have you post your own congratulations for Christina Cook on social media, and you can do so using the hashtag congrats Christina. We'll be on the lookout for those, but in the meantime, we have another congrats message from a previous, from the previous uh, holder of the record that Cook broke. Congratulations, Christina, on breaking the single flight record for a woman. I'm very happy for you. And we all know gravity sucks. That, of course, was former NASA astronaut Peggy Woodson, who until December held the record for longest single space flight by a woman. Cook surpassed Woodson's 288 days back on December 28th and obviously has continued racking up more days since then. She'll land with a total of 328, the new record for the longest single space flight by a woman, second longest single space flight by an American, and seventh on the all-time endurance list for Americans. There are six Americans who have spent more time in space than Cook has, but they all made multiple space flights to achieve their totals while this was Cook's first. Again, you can send your Congratulations to Cook using the hashtag congrats, congrats Christina. Cook, Parmitano, and Sportsov said goodbye to their crewmates, Jessica Mir, Andrew Morgan, and Oleg Skropochka, earlier this afternoon with lots of final hugs, photos, and waves before closing the hatches between their vehicle and the International Space Station at 8.34 p.m. Central Time. This is some video recorded during those, uh, those final farewells earlier today. Andrew Morgan coming in to the screenshot there, followed here by uh, Jessica Mir. And there's Oleg Skropochka. That was the last view that uh, we expect to see of the Expedition 61 crew, Cook, Parmitano, and Skortsov, before that we see them coming out of the Soyuz on the ground in Kazakhstan. After closing the hatches, they were able to get all the required leak checks and preparations done for an on-time undocking from the space station at 11.50 p.m. Central, setting them on their way for today's 3.12 a.m. landing. They've since moved into position about 20 miles away from the station and are just about ready to go for the deorbit burn that will take place at 2.18 a.m. Central Time, just uh, nine minutes from now. Here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, Flight Director Mike Lammers is leading the team here in Houston as they follow along in tonight's activities. He's accompanied by one of our new flight directors, uh, Marcos Flores, who is with him tonight. And then next to them, just uh, standing up there in the view, is Capcom Adam Springer. Well, I can describe them to you. They're beautiful. <laughs> 
And then in Kazakhstan, a number of officials and vehicles are standing by in preparation for the landing. A total of 12 MI-8 helicopters have been deployed uh, to various areas to await the landing. Eight are at the expected landing site southeast of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan. Two more will be ready 250 miles away in an area where a touchdown would take place if a ballistic injury occurred. And a final two helicopters will loiter midway between the two. We, of course, aren't expecting a ballistic entry, but do want to be prepared in case we need to be. Please deactivate cooler dry unit fans. Yes, it is in work. 5-3. Yes, correct. Command has been sent. Command executed. S-9 is already illuminated. Excellent. Copy all. And uh, you are going to set up the three command a bit later. Okay, copy. Crew inside the Soyuz talking with the team supporting them in Russia. Uh, you can see the, here the uh, the landing site that they're heading for today. Aboard the helicopters going out to the, that nominal landing site are several NASA representatives, including Joel Montalbano, the deputy director of uh, the space station program manager, uh, Megan MacArthur, who's the deputy chief of the astronaut office, and Trisha Mack, NASA's human spaceflight program Russia director, as well as flight surgeons and NASA photographer Bill Ingalls and NASA spokesman Rob Navius. Unfortunately, the weather that will greet them at the landing site won't be particularly welcoming. The temperature will be around 25 degrees Fahrenheit or about negative 3 degrees Celsius. Not the coldest landing ever, but not particularly comfortable either. And unfortunately for those of us watching at home, the forecast also calls for cloud coverage, which means we may not see much video of the capsule making its way down to the ground as we sometimes do. But once they've arrived, the landing team will quickly erect a medical tent at the landing site to get the crew out of the weather and keep them as comfortable as possible as they go through their regular post-landing checkouts. Okay, copy. It is not illuminated, and command was not sent. Uh, when you send the command, could you please call us with a confirmation? One more question. So once we activate it, we're supposed to confirm it. Is that correct? Yes. That's affirmative. Okay, copy all. And of course I will uh, do it as always. As I mentioned earlier, the Soyuz will be about 20 miles away from the station at the time of its deorbit burn. That burn will start 25 seconds after 2.18 a.m. Central and finish four minutes and 39 seconds later at 2.23 a.m. The engine firing will act as a brake on the Soyuz while it's still 272 miles above the Earth, slowing it down by 128 meters per second or 286 miles per hour to drop it out of orbit. You can see a graphic animation here of what that uh, deorbit burn looks like. Alexander, you're not About 23 minutes later at 2.46 a.m. Central when the Soyuz is, an is at an altitude of 87 miles above the Earth, the vehicle's computers will command the three modules of the Soyuz to separate just above the first traces of the Earth's atmosphere. You can see what uh, it's descent uh, as it moves on looks like. The orbital module on top is where the crew uh, has a small amount of room to move around in during its flight to the station after launch and the instrumentation and propulsion module on bottom which houses the oxygen storage tanks, attitude control thrusters, avionics and communications and control equipment will separate from the descent module in the middle where the crew is seated. 
It contains personally contoured seats for the crew members use during launch entry and landing as well as all the controls and displays necessary for critical flight activities. It also has life support provisions, batteries for re-entry and landing, and parachutes for soft landing rocket engines to slow the vehicle just before touchdown. The orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module will both burn up in the Earth's atmosphere while that descent module continues on with Cook, Parmitano, and Sportsov inside. Three minutes later at 2.49 a.m., about 62 miles or 326,000 feet above the Earth, the Soyuz will begin atmospheric reentry. The descent module's computer will orient the capsule with its ablative heat shield pointing forward to protect it from the heat as it begins to fly through the Earth's atmosphere and the crew will begin to feel the first effects of gravity again. That will build through 2.56 a.m. when they'll experience the maximum pressure or G-load for the descent. They'll probably feel briefly four to five times the force of gravity. Well, I don't see anything. Just two minutes later, 14 minutes before touchdown, when the Soyuz is 35,000 feet above the Earth and traveling at a speed of about 514 miles per hour, Soyuz computer will command the first of a series of parachutes to deploy. Two pilot parachutes will come first, one 6.7 square feet and one 48.4 square feet, and together they'll drag out the drogue chute, a 258 square foot parachute that slows the Soyuz down to 178 miles per hour. The drogue chute will also create a gentle spin for the Soyuz as it dangles underneath, which will help stabilize the capsule in its final minutes before touchdown. Then just before that touchdown, the drogue chutes will be jettisoned to make way for the deployment of the 3,281-foot main parachute. It will continue slowing down the capsule to a speed of about 60 miles per hour. At first, the capsule will hang beneath it at a 30-degree angle to the horizon to help with aerodynamic stability. But after one of the two harnesses connecting the parachute to the capsule is severed, the Soyuz will ride itself so that it's in a vertical position through touchdown. We're coming up on that deorbit burn in less than a minute now. Cover is open. SKD orbital maneuvering engine cover is open. Stabilization mode is on. 30 seconds remaining prior to engine uh, firing. Copy all. And I'm monitoring all the parameters. Switching to maneuver display. Uh, KDU combined uh, propulsion unit parameters are nominal. Copy. 10 seconds now until the new orbit burn. Five, three, standing by for engine firing. Uh, I confirm air engine activation and firing. Our team's confirming that the deorbit burn started. That'll last four minutes and 39 seconds till 2.23 a.m. The engine firing acts as a brake to slow the Soyuz down while it's about 272 miles above the Earth. Nozzle pressure 13. And that will drop it out of orbit and send it on a way, send it on its way to that uh, landing just southeast of Jessica's gun. Consumption 31 kilograms, acceleration 14.1, 0 0.45, uh, and uh, the burn value is 14.1, nozzle pressure 12.6, uh, spherical tank pressure 175, and 0 0.45, and the current uh, pressure is nominal. One minute. One minute into the deorbit burn. 0 0.45, this is the acceleration, uh, or delta V, and prop consumption is uh, 55 kilograms. One minute, 15, uh, 12, inaudible. This is the nozzle pressure, 0 0.45, 139, 45, inaudible. One minute and 30, 39.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.45, prop consumption, inaudible.
One minute, 45 seconds, nozzle pressure 12.6, spherical tank pressure 136. It is decreasing, acceleration 0.45. And Two minutes now into the burn. Again, we're aiming for four minutes and 39 seconds. This will begin slowing Soyuz down, dropping it into the Earth's atmosphere and bringing it home. Uh, two minutes, uh, 15 seconds, nozzle pressure 12.6, spherical tank pressure 122, uh, that's 0 0.45. And the current time is 64.4. Two minutes, uh, 30 seconds, uh, 67.5, uh, 0 0.46, prop consumption of t at 57. Everything is nominal. Copy all. Two minutes, 45 seconds, nozzle pressure 12.7, circle tank pressure 170. All parameters are nominal, delta V 0 0.46, and current time is Three minutes into the burn, one minute and uh, 39 seconds left. Uh, 8.5, 0.46, this is the delta V, 189, this is the prop consumption value. And all parameters are nominal. Spherical tank pressure, 107, 104, 0.46. And inaudible. 3 minutes 30 seconds, 93.7, 0 0.46. And prop consumption is also nominal. All parameters are nominal. Three minutes 45 seconds, 12.7. This is the nozzle pressure. And 97, 94. 104.9. Four minutes down now. We're hearing those crew reports that all is looking nominal. Four minutes. Uh, 107.9, 0 0.46, 252. Uh, this is the prop consumption rate. Everything is nominal. Uh, four minutes and 11 seconds. Nozzle pressure 12.8, 12.5. Circle tanks 18. An audible, that to be uh, 0 0.45, 46, uh, and 125. Five seconds left. Uh, 284, this is the prop consumption value. The thing is nominal, standing by for uh, engine activation. Uh, deactivation. Deactivation confirmed. Uh, case double valve is open. Uh, and the separation. Confirmed. Uh, uh, burn value is uh, 128, uh, 127.99. Uh, barrel pressure is decreasing. Copy. That deal burn took place and uh, wrapped up exactly on time and went exactly as planned. That means that the Soyuz crew is definitely on their way home now. They've been uh, using that to burn to drop back into the Earth's atmosphere, slow down and begin their descent, which will lead to that 3.12 a.m. Central Time landing just southeast of Jetskazgan in Kazakhstan. There will be a little bit of wait here now before the next big milestone. That will come in about 23 minutes at 2.46 a.m. And that is when the, co the Soyuz computers will command its three modules to separate. Crew members are in the center module. They'll get rid of the modules on either side of them. That will uh, ensure that uh, their their heat shield is, is exposed and ready to protect them. And the parachutes will be able, be able to deploy and slow down their descent once they are just a few minutes ahead of landing. Again, that deorbit burn took place uh, right on time at 2.18 a.m. Central Time and wrapped up right on time as well, four minutes and 39 seconds later.
Your goal, uh, to switch to page 56, six minutes remaining, my first says rescue aids uh, should be uh, ready at this point. Uh, no later than at what time? Uh, six minutes prior to the separation time. Yes, we still have time, so we will start at approximately 11.42. Copy. Actually, at 11.38. And I would like to remind you that you should provide the running commentary of your actions, even if there is no calm. Once again, that uh, four minute and 39 second deorbit burn is the key to uh, getting the crew on their way back home and wrapping up what will be a record setting mission for for uh, the crew members and in particularly Christina Cook, who will have spent 328 days in space, the longest single space flight for any female. You can see this video from her launch back on March 14th in 2019. Right, she launched fine. actually with Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin as part of the then Expedition 59 crew. She saw not only that uh, Expedition 59 cr come to an end, uh, but also, of course, Expedition 60 uh -huh. and then uh, 61, which just wrapped up with her departure along with Luca Parmitano and Alexander Sforzov. This launch uh, set off uh, the uh, the count that uh, eventually racked up 200, uh, 328 days in space, setting that record. But uh, at the time of her launch, Christina did not know that she would be staying in space for quite such a long time. She uh, handled the, the news well, though, was excited to get the extra time in space, and uh, has used it to accomplish quite a bit, including uh, six spacewalks, totaling 42 hours and 15 minutes, including uh, three that were with her and Jessica Meir, the first three spacewalks to be conducted by an all-female team. You can see some of the highlights of her uh, of her mission here. Again, that 328 days in space, six spacewalks for four, 42 hours and 15 minutes. All of that done over the course of 5,248 orbits around the Earth, a total of more than 139 million miles. Yes, that's correct. In that uh, number of miles, she could have gone to the moon and back 291 times. Again, that uh, record does leave her with the longest single space flight by a woman and also the seventh longest time spent in space by a U.S. astronaut. There are six uh, U.S. astronauts ahead of her, but all of them completed their time over more than one mission. This is, of course, her first uh, mission, and she racked it up all in that time. That also leaves her 50th on the all-time endurance list for all astronauts. And to give you an idea of where she stands, uh, in addition to having the longest single space flight by a woman, she is second on the list of longest single space flights by an American just a few days under Scott Kelly's record of 340 days, and she beat uh, Peggy Whitson's previous record of 288 days back in December. Still about 15 minutes before we uh, see that command from the Soyuz computers. That uh, will that will command the modules of the Soyuz to separate. That will again come at uh, 2:45 a.m. Central Time. But in the meantime, we are getting confirmation here on the ground that the uh, landing team that uh, will be meeting uh, Cook, Parmitano, and Swartsov at the landing site is well on their way.
to go over again the uh, the different uh, members of the team who are going to be meeting the crew when they do touch down. Here's another look at it. A total of 12 MI-8 helicopters are on their way to various possible landing sites. Uh, eight are going to be at the expected landing site southeast of Jessica's Gun. Two more will be ready about 250 miles away in an area where a touchdown would take place if ballistic entry occurred, which we're not expecting. And uh, the final two helicopters loiter midway between the two. Then uh, in addition to that, we also are sending out six all-terrain vehicles, three Antonov airplanes that serve as flying command centers, and uh, these, uh, that's a look at that all-terrain vehicles there. Um, the Antonov airplanes will also uh, provide communication between the crew and Moscow. Once again, we're counting down the minutes until uh, about 2.46 a.m. when the uh, modules of the Soyuz will separate following a command from the Soyuz computers. The orbital module on top where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during its flight to the space station after launch. And the instrumentation and propulsion module on the bottom, which houses the oxygen storage tanks, attitude control thrusters, avionics and communications, and control equipment, both of those separate, leaving the descent module in the middle on its own with the crew inside. Here's a look at, at what that, uh, that descent module looks like. You can see the three seats the crew sit in. They have uh, seats that are molded especially for them to try and give them as much cushion as possible during landing. It's not a large area, but they don't have to be in it alone for very long. So a look at uh, some of the controls that they, that they uh, have a view of as they make that descent. We saw a view of some of them earlier during the undocking. In addition to the uh, the controls and displays and the seats, it also has life support provisions, batteries for re-entry and landing, and a parachute and soft landing rockets that help slow the vehicle down just before touchdown, try and make it a little softer on them. The other two modules, uh, the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module, both burn up in the Earth's atmosphere while the descent module continues on. can see uh, that uh, orbital module here that again provides them a little extra space to move around in on their way to the space station but uh, once they're on their way home they do uh, get rid of that leaving just the descent module here in the middle also uh, jettisoning the instrumentation and propulsion module on the bottom.
All continuing to go well as uh, we wait for that uh, next big milestone, 2.46 a.m. Central Time, when the Soyuz Descent Module will get rid of the uh, orbital module and the instrumentation propulsion module and allow the crew, the crew to continue on its journey. Well, let's get ready the rescue aid. Closing the visors. Look that there is nothing in the way of the helmet closing and two clicks. Even maybe. And now S3 command. Nominal attitude for separation. Copy. Releasing the PTT. breakdown here of uh, the events that we're going to be watching for as the Soyuz makes its way back down to the Earth, uh, starting with that deorbit burn that took place at 2.18 a.m. Central Time, right on time. We're heading now towards the module separation, the second milestone there on the list. 
That's coming up in about six minutes now. That's when uh, the um, middle part of the Soyuz carrying the crew will get uh, rid of the other two segments so that uh, all the systems it needs for landing are exposed and ready for entry. Once we do see that module separation, things will begin happening pretty fast at uh, 2.49 a.m. Central, about three minutes later. While the Soyuz is about 62 miles above the Earth, it'll begin experiencing atmospheric entry. That's when the descent module's computers will orient the capsule with its heat shield pointing towards the, uh, the direction it's traveling in, the hot part, to protect it from heat as it begins to fly through the Earth's atmosphere. And the crew begins to feel the first effects of gravity. It's going to be building through uh, 2.56 a.m. Central Time when they'll experience the maximum G load or pressure for uh, about uh, four to five times the force of gravity for a few minutes, or just briefly. Just two minutes after that, uh, we'll start seeing uh, the parachutes begin to deploy. As you're seeing here, there are a number of them. It starts with uh, two pilot parachutes that pull out a larger drogue chute, which slows the Soyuz down a little bit, and in turn pulls out the main parachutes, that uh, orange and white one you see in this graphic. But just before it does touch down, one other system uh, helps the Soyuz slow down just a little bit more, the uh, soft landing jets, as they're called although most astronauts will tell you it's not a particularly soft landing even with their help. Those fire just about two seconds before touchdown to help uh, lessen the impact of meeting the Earth. Starting for the start of separation cyclogram.
We should be coming up on that uh, module separation here in just a moment. C separation minus one minute, 14 seconds. This happens when the soy is about 87 miles above the Earth. Also, so please continue reporting to us, even if there is no two-way com. Teams here in the ground are reporting that the uh, crew members are going through an area where some bad communication was expected, uh, poor communication ability between us and this crew on board the Soyuz. So we will hopefully. Uh, Here's some confirmation as things happen. We should be right about now seeing those uh, separation, the separation of the three Soyuz modules. Separation. And there you go. Sounds like they are now separated. That again takes place when the Soyuz is 87 miles above the Earth, sending the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module on their way to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere while the uh, crew module, uh, the, uh, the uh, descent module, uh, is left with the crew inside along with its uh, heat shield and its parachutes that will help them safely get down to Earth. The next milestone we'll be looking for is atmospheric entry coming up in about two minutes. That's when the crew begins to feel the effects of gravity for the first time since they left Earth. And that's 328 days ago for Christina Cook, 201 for Luca Parmitano and Alexander Skortsov. Also about this time, the descent module's computer will orient the capsule so that the heat shield is pointing forward, protecting it from the heat generated as it begins to experience the atmosphere. Once again, we are in the middle of a period when uh, the communication between us and the Soyuz was expected to be a little spotty, so we may not hear too much from the crew as they begin making their way home, but we did uh, hear that that did get a successful separation of the three modules, and now we're watching uh, for them to begin uh, experiencing the Earth's atmosphere for the first time. Just in the past couple of minutes, they will have gone from 87 miles above the Earth to about 62 miles. Again, things start happening pretty quick now. Once they uh, do begin experiencing the Earth's atmosphere, the uh, computers on board the Soyuz, of course, will begin getting the Soyuz into position for its landing, uh, and more specifically the the heat they'll be experiencing as they make their way through the atmosphere. About this time, the crew is beginning to feel the effects of gravity again, and then it's going to continue building for the next six minutes or so when they'll experience the maximum pressure or G-load. 
They can expect to feel about four to five times the force of gravity that we experience on Earth just for a little while. Expedition 61 members well on their way now to that 3.12 a.m. landing time that we've been heading towards since they left the International Space Station at 11.50. Everything happening in sequence and on time so far, starting with today's uh, 2.18 a.m. Central Time deorbit burn, set the uh, Expedition 61 crew members on their way for a 3.12 a.m. landing. They're currently right in the middle of the uh, of, uh, of that descent, uh, coming up on the maximum pressure that the crew will experience and uh, in the middle of uh, plasma interface, be coming out of that in just a couple of minutes, and then uh, Shortly afterwards, we'll begin seeing parachutes deploy. Just now coming into uh, that time when the crew members will be experiencing the maximum G loads. What is the G load? We have 4.28. Right now we copy. Integral is 015. And we have automatic control descent. And now 30 seconds. from the crew members there, uh, lining up exactly as expected with the point that when they'd be experiencing those maximum G loads. Now about a minute away from when we would expect the parachutes to begin deploying, about uh, 35,000 feet above the earth. Right now they'll be traveling right around uh, 500 miles per hour. Uh, we had O2 supply, so the pressure it's different now. Parachute deployments will start with the two pilot chutes that pull out the 258 square foot drogue chute. 
That slows the Soyuz down to 178 miles per hour in only about 16 seconds and begins stabilizing the capsule. Once it's jettisoned, it makes way for the 3,281-foot main parachute, which slows the Soyuz down to about 15.6 miles per hour. Send in by. Send some animation here of that sequence. Parachutes should be begin deploying right about now. Again, with that, uh, those uh, two pilot chutes first, pulling out a drogue chute that slows the Soyuz down to 178 miles per hour, and then makes way for the main parachute, big yellow, uh, orange and white ones that uh, you're used to seeing. That continues slowing the Soyuz down to about 15.6 miles per hour. main parachute uh, will keep the uh, Soyuz slowing down steadily as they make their way to the to the ground uh, for more than 10 minutes. That again uh, not only slows them down but it also helps them uh, get stabilized as they make their way towards that landing which we are expecting at 3.12 a.m. Central Time. Two harnesses on the main parachute hold the Soyuz at a 30 degree angle to the horizon until the bottom har harness is severed and the Soyuz is able to swing into a vertical posi position for touchdown. And it looks like the team and the uh, and uh, the flight control team in Russia is uh, seeing some video of the of the Soyuz making its way down. Already beneath that main parachute, that uh, will continue slowing the Soyuz down to 15.6 miles per hour. Seventeen point one. Pressure nine for number one. In inaudible. Uh, Fifteen for the second one. We're working on getting a better shot of that video for you, but. Uh, Everything there it is, and uh, that is a, a great view of the Soyuz under the main parachute. Not as as cloudy as predicted. It looks like a, a very clear view. Nine 
no issues. And this is actually the first time that we're getting HD video of the landing, so it's especially fortuitous that we're getting such a clear video, despite the uh, cloudy weather predictions. Inside the capsule there, Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Skortsov are just minutes away from uh, their triumphant return to Earth. That should be taking place around 3.12 a.m. Central Time, so still another 10 minutes for them to uh, to slow down as they make their way toward the Earth. As they get closer, just about uh, two seconds before they before they touch down, so uh, Sportsov will get a notice from the computer to fire six solid propellant engines called the soft landing engines. Slow the soil use down to five feet five feet per second, or about three and a half miles per hour. Inaudible. Zero point five. Zero point three. Once again, these, this video coming up from helicopters who've made their way out to the landing site ready to meet them. About eight uh, helicopters are going to converge on the landing site with a number of uh, support personnel from NASA and Roscosmos. Meters right now. Standing by for the um, report. So uh, we are not going to do anything else right now. Slight correction to what I said there. This video actually coming from the team who arrived on the ground uh, ready to rush in to meet the crew once they do touch down. Helicopters also, of course, converging on the landing site to uh, to provide their support personnel as well. Three minutes. Altitude is thirty three inaudible. So we'll use MS-13 continuing its smooth descent on a way to a 3.12 a.m. landing in Kazakhstan. 2800 meters, this is the current altitude. All looking good so far as it makes its way down. Again, a great view here. The first time that we've been able to get HD video from the landing site. These uh, views coming from the team who have already made it to uh, where we expect the Soyuz to touch down on the ground. Just a few more minutes now left in Christina Cook's record-breaking space flight. 328 days in space, just about to come to an end with a, this upcoming touchdown.
please green audible. Stop pressure, inaudible. Christina, yes, go ahead. So use MS-13 continuing to make its way down. Just a few more minutes. Uh, scheduled to touch down in two minutes, actually, 3.12 a.m. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of video back. There it is. Inside, Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and Alexander Svartsov. Copy all. Again, one of the last things to happen here will be the uh, firing of the soft landing engines. That'll happen just a couple of seconds before the actual touchdown when it's about 39 feet above the earth. That's six solid propellant engines that are intended to uh, soften the blow of landing just a little bit. Altitude. Soyuz also has seat shock absorbers that will be turned on by now prepared for that landing and the seats themselves are contoured to fit the astronauts individually to provide them the softest possible landing although all reports are that it still is not quite soft Land inside. You can see one of the helicopters that's uh, been sent in to meet the Soyuz there in that view as well. And it looks like Soyuz MS-13 carrying Christina Cook, Luca Parmitano, and uh, Alexander Swartsov has touched down 3.12 a.m. Central Time, right on time. And now after 328 days in space and 139 million miles for Christina Cook and 201 days in space, 85 million miles for Luca Parmitano and Alexander Swartsov, the Expedition 61 crew is officially home. Again, that uh, landing came right at 3.12 a.m. Central Time, 3.12 p.m. Kazakhstan Time, following uh, the deorbit burn that set, it's on, set it on its way at 2.18 a.m. Central Time. 
Now that the Soyuz has touched down, we'll begin seeing, uh, hopefully, with this great view that we're getting, some of the helicopters begin landing around it, uh, teams descending now that it has uh, safely made it to the ground and they can move in. Number of, uh, number of landing uh, support personnel will be moving into place to help the crew members out of the Soyuz. We should, uh, should see them as we usually do uh, in the chairs in front of their vehicle before they get uh, whisked away to the medical tent for their post-landing checkups. It is, again, uh, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit in Kazakhstan here at the landing site today, so that they won't probably won't to linger very long. But uh, as soon as we are able to get you a view of them, we will certainly do so. Once again, for Christina Cook, this wrapped up a record-breaking mission, 328 days, the longest single space flight for a woman from any nation, and the seventh longest space flight for man or woman for U.S. astronauts. She launched on uh, March 14, 2019, and has been at the space station since, seeing a number of crew members come and go. Her uh, current crewmates on board the Soyuz, Luca Parmitano and Alexander Skvartsov, arrived at the station on July 20th, along with Andrew Morgan, who stayed behind at the International Space Station. He, Jessica Mir, and Oleg Skropochka will be there until April. During those 328 days on space, in space, uh, Cook traveled 139 million miles equivalent of 29, uh, 291 round trips to the moon and back for Luca Parmitano and Alexander Skvartsov. They uh, spent 201 days in space, made 500, excuse me, 3,216 orbits and traveled 85 billion miles. Although they are back on Earth, their journey is not quite done. They'll uh, need to make their way for Skvartsov back to Star City. Luca will be uh, traveling back to Europe, and Christina, of course, will be coming back to the United States. They've got a little bit more journey ahead of them. Uh, but first, we'll wait for those landing support crew members to uh, make their way to the capsule and begin, and begin uh, getting them out. We are seeing a lot of your congratulations messages come through for Christina Cook using the hashtag congrats, Christina. Those are great, and we really appreciate them. And, of course, we were also uh, ahead of her landing, uh, collecting some congratulation messages from the teams that support her here on the ground. We've got another one coming up here from jo the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Hey, Christina. Matt Bennett here. Uh, this is OCO3 project manager Ralph Basilio and project scientist Dr. Anne Marie Eldering. And we just want to say thank you for all your interest in the OCO3 project and all the beautiful pictures that you took of OCO3 in action on the space station. We're really glad you're home safely. From all of us here at JPL, welcome home! 
It is certainly not to, too late to get your own congratulation messages in, so keep those coming using the hashtag Congrats Christina. We're standing by as we wait to uh, hopefully be getting some video from the landing site pretty soon. While we wait for the video from the landing site to come uh, come online, we have uh, one more video uh, congratulating Christina from the teams that have been supporting her here on the ground. Welcome, Welcome home, Christina. It's been great supporting you from the ISS Mer. Thank you. Welcome home, Christina. Congratulations on your record-setting mission from your Boeing Houston ISS team. Two more of the, the teams that have been supporting Christina Cook and the other space station crew members from the ground sending in their congrats. And uh, just one more reminder, you can send in your own using the hashtag congrats, Christina. We're still waiting to receive video from the landing site, but we do have uh, personnel there on the ground who are ready to send us in some reports. Uh, one of them is NASA spokesman Rob Navius. Rob, can you hear us? Yeah, I can, Brevi. Uh, a remarkable scene out here. A journey roughly the equivalent of uh, 291 round trips to the moon for Christina Cook at an end. The Soyuz M13 stopped the landing. It is upright, and they're in the process of uh, beginning to uh, put the erect to a ladder on top of the dash. 
hundred yards away. They're still on the ground. And, uh, more likely. Rob, I think we may be missing some of what you're saying there. It sounds like the you said that Soyuz is did land upright. They're getting the ladder into the place, and hopefully soon we'll be getting the crew members out. Yes, Randy. Uh, it is uh, the uh, MS-13 landed upright. They'll be uh, erecting a ladder and begin the. This uh, is very quickly here. Uh, the um, scene here is uh, almost surrealistic in the middle of this desolate area of south central Kazakhstan and on the ground. All of the Russian MI-8 helicopters were on the ground within four minutes of touchdown. Just a remarkable pinpoint landing between the cook, Luka Parmitano, and Alexander Skorzov. We saw some great video of it as it was coming down. No clouds in the way, thankfully. Uh, but uh, we don't have any video of, of uh, the scene there uh, at the landing site just yet, so we're still waiting on that. All right, well, hang in here with me. Uh, the ladder is now being uh, put uh, around the top of the spacecraft. Uh, that will uh, set the stage uh, for the opening of the hatch by the RSC Energia personnel there. The first one's on the scene. Uh, medical personnel consisting of NASA flight surgeon, European Space Agency flight surgeon, uh, and uh, Russian flight surgeon and respective nurses. They are all ready to uh, attend to their respective crew members. This whole process uh, will take uh, just a few minutes uh, before each of the crew members is extracted uh, from the Soyuz descent module. They'll be put in chairs. That's the current plan, although it's pretty cold out here. Temperatures below freezing in the mid-20s Fahrenheit. So how long they actually remain in chairs uh, remains to be seen before they would be brought into that inflatable medical tent for initial medical testing. Yeah, I imagine they won't be they won't be wanting to linger any more than they have to, uh, ready to get inside that medical tent as soon as they can. We are getting. Now, let me know when you're uh, seeing. You, if you're seeing your first imagery uh, from the landing site, you're seeing uh, some of the RSC and RG personnel and the search and recovery forces, uh, they will begin uh, the process momentarily of opening that top hatch. Uh, the uh, Soyuz commander, Alexander Skortsov, in the center seat of the descent module, he'll be the first to be extracted, uh, followed uh, in all likelihood by Parmitano and Cook. No video for us yet, so we're depending on your description for a little while longer. All right, as is uh, typically the case, uh, the flags of Russia and Kazakhstan have been uh, planted uh, in a perimeter around uh, the landing site. Uh, again, just a, a uh, just a, a very surrealistic scene. In a foot of snow in early February, a crew that uh, just hours ago was in the comfort of the International Space Station back on Earth, Christina Cook having completed 328 days in space, the second longest U.S. space flight in history. You've seen a number of these landings up close and personal. Are you able to, to compare this to the other ones or rank them in any way? Yeah, I would uh, tell you that uh, the speed in which uh, our helicopters were on the ground and our ability to see uh, the Soyuz under the chutes in the final minutes before the uh, soft landing engines fired and touchdown occurred, uh, mm -hmm. you never get uh, tired of it. It's just a remarkable scene. The uh, Soyuz uh, itself, as is uh, always the case, its outer hull scorched uh, by the heat of reentry, uh, but uh, the personnel here working very quickly uh, to get that top hatch open. The uh, ladder has already been erected, and uh, we're expecting uh, to see the first items uh, removed from the Soyuz vehicle uh, very soon, followed by the crew members one by one. And I suppose Sforsov will be first? Yes, the Soyuz commander is always the first out because that makes the way uh, clear for the other uh, crew members who flanked him during reentry. Uh, Luca Parmitano, flight engineer number one to his left, Christina Cook, flight engineer number two to his right. They'll be extracted uh, after Gortsov is, but they have to get that Soyuz commander out first uh, to clear the way for the extraction of the other crew members.
We're still waiting to see more video, but uh, in the meantime, we are hearing from a lot of people on, who are watching on social media sending in their congratulations to Christina using the hashtag congrats, Christina. Uh, so we hope that you're able to, to pass on those congratulations when, when you see her and her crewmates. We will certainly do that, Brandy. Uh, as I'm sure you have uh, reported earlier in the day, once uh, the crew has completed about an hour and a half worth of medical testing in that nearby tent that, was, that has already been erected, uh, they will uh, uh, be flown in three individual helicopters, a two-hour, ten-minute helicopter flight uh, back to the northeast of our landing site here to the staging city of Karaganda, uh, where they will uh, undergo a brief uh, period uh, of uh, additional medical testing uh, before Cook and Parmitano board a NASA jet to head for Cologne, Germany, Alexander Skorzov uh, will board a Gagarin cosmonaut uh, training center aircraft to fly back to his home in Star City, Russia. It, it is in Cologne where the European Astronaut uh, Center is located that Parmitano and other ESA personnel who will be on the NASA plane will be dropped off. They'll be greeted by uh, ESA uh, VIPs. Uh, at the uh, Cologne Airport, it's actually a military airfield that's adjacent to the commercial uh, part of the Cologne Bonn Airport in Germany. Uh, and Christina Cook will undergo some additional medical testing. That was the planned protocol uh, in uh, Cologne before she reboards the NASA jet. And we will head back uh, to Houston. And amazingly, the trip from space to Earth takes less time than the trip uh, for, for the crew members back to their own homes. Exactly. Uh, I will tell you that uh, we heard uh, uh, earlier uh, today, about a few, uh, two or three hours ago, that after the crew had uh, closed the hatch to their Soyuz spacecraft, leaving uh, Drew Morgan, Jessica Muir, and the new, Soy uh, the new ISS commander, Alex Kropotchka, behind, that uh, Jessica Muir uh, reported, uh, it sure feels lonely up here. But that won't be the case for very long, just a a couple of months from now, another Soyuz launch with Chris Cassidy, Nikolai Tikhanov, and Andrei Babkin uh, will be uh, staged from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, which is to the southwest of where we are at the moment. Uh, that launch scheduled uh, for April 9th to re-up the uh, station crew, at least for an eight-day period, to a full six-person complement. The uh, the hugs on on the orbit that we saw during the hatch closing, and also the words from uh, Luca Parmitano as he was handing over the command of the station to Oleg Skropochka were uh, all very touching. You could tell the crew, uh, you could you could see that they were going to miss each other, and and they've also uh, been been tweeting as they as they led up to their to their departure about about that how much they'll they'll miss all being together in space. Still no video on our end, uh, unfortunately, Rob. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Brandy, are you, are you receiving video yet? No, no video yet here. Okay, you should be getting it uh, any time now. The, um, the crew uh, was very close, uh, particularly Jessica Muir and Christina Cook. Uh, they had uh, trained together. They were classmates in their astronaut class uh, several years ago and, of course, uh, conducted uh, a series of... Uh, all female spacewalks to uh, set yet another mark in history, uh, as if uh, there weren't enough records that were being set uh, during the course of Expedition 61, which saw a record nine spacewalks totaling 61 hours dead even. Uh, very ironic for uh, for those nine spacewalks during ex Expedition 62 way the Expedition. Who certainly earned a rest after all that they did in space. I'm sure they're they're eager to get home at this point. Yeah, the thing that hit me, Andy, is uh, the precision with which uh, the Russian search and recovery forces and the support personnel execute one of these uh, landing and subsequent recoveries. Uh, we are actually looking off uh, beyond a series of Russian Mi-8 helicopters to some local villagers that are riding native horses. On a, in a foot of snow here in the South Central Step of Kyrgyzstan. You just never know, Brandy. Can't wait to get the video. It sounds like it's going to be really good. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. There's a bell out here, no wind, temperature in the mid-20s, and uh, natives riding their, their native horses just a, a little bit 
of the stroll on local uh, on local horses on a Thursday. Are they making By the any way, progress? The RSA Energy, the, the Energy personnel are in the process of uh, beginning uh, to gather up the uh, the uh, cords uh, for the main parachute that uh, will be uh, folded up and uh, returned for post-flight analysis. The top hatch has now been opened, by the way, to the MS-13 spacecraft. Uh, the uh, large orange and white parachute that you're accustomed to seeing uh, for landings and uh, uh, here at the landing site itself uh, during the descent uh, of the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, that parachute uh, is going to be gathered up and uh, and uh, taken back uh, to uh, uh, for engineers to do post-flight analysis on if they'll work like a charm. Uh, without the any presence of wind here today, the Soyuz landed uh, upright, which is the preferred orientation, although it was dragged on, the, on its side. Uh, there, of course, is another hatch available for the crew to be extracted. We should be seeing Alexander Skortsov being pulled out of the Soyuz spacecraft here almost any time now. The chairs uh, that they will be placed in with very uh, warm blankets uh, to cover them, uh, those have been uh, set up. So uh, we'll be expecting uh, to see uh, uh, the three crew members here before long, and now they're in the process of pulling the first crew member out, and indeed, Alexander Sportsov, the veteran uh, Soyuz commander with more than 500 days in space now on three space missions, smiling broadly, uh, a whole uh, flank of uh, photographers and television cameras here at the landing site. He is resting now on the edge of the Soyuz spacecraft and uh, will be swung around and assisted uh, down the ladder and be brought into his chair uh, for a few minutes uh, to get his uh, his equilibrium back and uh, hugs uh, to some of the RSC and Nergi personnel in the process of uh, removing him from his Soyuz spacecraft. And it looks like they are starting to get uh to video um, at the at the Russian Flight Control Center, uh, so hopefully we will we will be seeing it for ourselves soon. We're we're seeing a, a smaller version of it right now. Gorsov uh, is out of the spacecraft. Uh, he will be uh, helped down the slide. That's part of this ladder apparatus at the uh, top hatch of the Soyuz. He's waving, smiling broadly, thumbs up. And uh, he is now back on terra firma. And we are seeing that live now, Rob. Thanks so much for keeping us informed while we waited. Uh, we got it just in time to see uh, his smiles and thumbs up. Very good. We'll, uh, we'll hang here with you, Brandy, uh, and provide any uh, additional details that we might be able to do. I'm going to try to reposition myself so I can uh, get a better view of Christina Cook when she comes out of uh, the Soyuz. Alexander Skortsov certainly looks like he's glad to be home, pumping his fist into the air, shaking hands, lots of well-wishers on, on hand. Once again, uh, on this mission, Alexander Skortsov racked up 201 days in space, but he's adding that to what he uh, what he uh, totaled on previous space uh, three uh, uh, two previous space flights. Now to come up with 546 days in total that he has spent in space over those three space flights. And, and Brandy, if I might interrupt, uh, Christina Cook, your record holder, she is out. Thumbs up and a huge smile. Yes, we are seeing it real time. She definitely looks glad to be home. Again, uh, 328 days that she spent in space since her launch on March 14th. Now is uh, going down the slide, Brandy, and she'll be brought uh, to her chair. All 
all smiles and looking like she's feeling great. Can still hear me. Yes, we can still hear you, Rob. Okay, I'm going to make my way over to uh, Christina. Christina, welcome home. Current record holder for longest uh, single space flight by a woman of any nationality and seventh longest or seventh most space flight time accumulated by uh, by an American astronaut. They, um, Randy, they just uh, scooted her chair just uh, a few feet back from where it was uh, to give uh, the uh, group of photographers and uh, television cameras here a little bit uh, more room to position themselves. Uh, she's now donned sunglasses, as undoubtedly you can see, and uh, we're awaiting uh, the extraction of Luca Palmitano, who has spent more days in space than any other European space agency astronauts. We're standing by for that. We're still at the moment seeing a view of Alexander Skortsov, still looking like he is feeling pretty good and happy to be home. Still giving thumbs up. Christina Kuska, by the way, Brandy, just looked around at the, uh, the large uh, group of uh, folks here to greet uh, her and her crewmates, and she uttered the word, wow. Very impressed and very happy to be breathing this nice cold air on uh, this Thursday afternoon. I think and a lot of people saying wow well about her as well. Big thumbs up uh, for Luca Pomitano. If you're seeing him being helped down the slide, he is no stranger to uh, Soyuz landings, of course. And Cook and uh, Sports Off are giving a big fist bump uh, to their teammate in number one. Um, Looks like you've got three happy uh, astronauts there. Glad to be back to the ground. Kind of a big smile just pointed at me that I back on Earth. And as you pointed out, he has uh, most days in space of any ESA astronaut at this point uh, with his uh, two space flights totaling 367 days in space. That includes the 201 that he uh, that he just returned from. Uh, Trio of all terrain is one of each crew member pulled up to the perimeter of the landing uh, site. Once the crew members are finished in the medical tent, they will be uh, driven from the medical tent uh, to their respective helicopters, uh, getting uh, the journey back to the staging city of Karaganda, as we mentioned earlier. <laughs> Oh, 
We're seeing Alexander Skortsov right now on the phone. I assume probably talking to some to some family or friends who are watching from a distance. Although it looks crowded uh, there at the landing site from this view, uh, if you were able to turn the camera around, it would be just uh, empty space all around them. So they are, are really in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this, uh, this landing site, uh, which is uh, typical uh, in its latitude and longitude for Soyuz landing, the nominal Soyuz landings, which of course this one was, uh, it's wide open spaces. I, I'm just struck by the natives who came out to watch this landing on horseback who are uh, just a, a few yards away from us here. Totally, totally extraordinary. That's a lucky chance for them getting to see to see the, the welcome home. Randy, I'm expecting uh, that it will be just uh, a few more minutes before they start uh, to carry the crew members one by one to the nearby medical tent. I'm going to get away here for a little bit, uh, uh, and we'll uh, let you know when uh, that process begins, if you are not already seeing it. I'm just standing probably uh, 15 feet away from the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, some of the uh, early return items are being unloaded from the top hatch uh, that uh, the crew was extracted from uh, just a few minutes ago. I'm actually going to take a stroll over here to take a closer look at uh, the natives on horseback. Local Kazakh residents. They're, talk they're talking to uh, some of the engineering personnel uh, who are uh, at the moment from uh, working uh, the parachute, uh, putting it in the right configuration. Uh, they have a, a dog with them, so uh, a little, a little bit of nature mixing with human spaceflight out here today. Now, again, you, you've been out there a number of times. Is, is that a first for you? I've never seen this, Brandy. Um, it's, uh, it's remarkable. I mean, uh, there are small villages uh, in, the, uh, in the close proximity to uh, this landing site, not uh, immediately uh, within a few feet, of course, or a few miles, but uh, for some amazing reason, these folks know when landings are about to occur, and uh, in this world of GPS and other uh, capabilities, they pretty much know exactly where a Soyuz spacecraft is going to land. I would come out to see it if I were nearby as well. The other thing that's uh, quite remarkable is uh, the fact that uh, this cold front that brought about a foot of snow to the region uh, in the last uh, few days it uh, blew through right on right on time, and as predicted, uh, when we left uh, the staging city of Tarragonda earlier this morning, it was uh, very, very gray, overcast, and it was snowing uh, to the northeast. Uh, as soon as we got airborne in the helicopters, however, uh, we could see uh, clear skies as far as uh, the eye could see, and uh, it has turned into a gorgeous winter day. We're seeing Skortsov uh, eat an apple right now. I know that uh, Christina Cook was uh, craving chips and salsa. Do you think that's in her in her near future? No question. There there are enough uh, chips, salsa on the NASA plane coming home to uh, accommodate several uh, Mexican restaurants back in Houston. I will tell you, no shortage of uh, her favorite delicacy uh, on the way home. Everyone's still uh, looking happy, lots of smiles. They're all happy. Of course, uh, they've uh, gone into the process of the traditional group picture. Uh, the crew very much in the fresh air out there.
sounds like we lost uh, Rob Navius there, giving us the play-by-play -play from on the, on the scene in Kazakhstan. But as you can see, we've still got the video, so uh, able to see as uh, the uh, as the activities uh, as, as the activities uh, continue, that they uh, they should be preparing to move the crew into the medical tent sometime sometime pretty soon. Looks like that move to the medical tent is imminent, starting with Alexander Skortsov. The landing support personnel will will carry the crew members into the tent just so that they don't have to have to risk uh, moving on their own when their equilibrium may still be adjusting from their reintroduction to gravity. All of you there of Alexander Skortsov uh, disappearing into the medical tent. Again, they've got uh, several uh, post-landing uh, checkups they'll go through. And uh, we also now have back online with us Rob Navius, who's there on the scene. Rob, can you hear us? Yes, Brandy. It's off of wild horses, as they said, in Kazakhstan. Couldn't keep me away, so I'm back with you. Uh, Skortsov is now in the medical tent. The local farm in town is now in and uh, he has started you know, the short uh, ride uh, being carried by the Space Agency and Russian personnel to that medical tent for seen a book uh, will follow in very short order. Yes, we're seeing Luca Parmitano on his way now. And Christina Cook is now being hoisted by NASA and Russian personnel. And uh, she will be brought into the medical tent to begin her medical uh, testing. We we mentioned earlier, an hour and a half to complete. So we'll turn it back over to you, Brandy, uh, in Mission Control in Houston, and uh, we'll be talking to you later uh, after uh, we begin the trip back to Houston. Thanks so much for, for all the uh, the great descriptions, Rob. We really appreciate you calling in, and please pass on our uh, congrats and welcome homes to, to all three of the crew members. Well, we will do that, Brandy, and uh, have a good rest of the day. Uh, another successful space station mission in the books. Indeed. Thanks again, Rob, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, uh, your your play-by-play. -play. It's been 
been great to have. And there is Christina Cook making her own way into the medical tent. Still with smiles and thumbs up. All the crew members seeming like they're feeling pretty well for having uh, spent 201 to 328 days in space. The checkups that the crew members undergo inside the medical tent to take a while. So that will be the last that uh, we see of them for for our landing coverage here today. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, to uh, get you some video as, as they begin making their way home um, through video files uh, coming up. But uh, that uh, that is probably the last we'll see of them in Kazakhstan. You can see there uh, some of the some of the nearby residents who have have come out to see the uh, the ceremony, the welcome home. <coughs> and a great view of the uh, Soyuz MS-13 here, still being unloaded. They'll be getting a lo lot of uh, science experiments and. Um, data off of the off the spacecraft. It'll be making their, its way home alongside the astronauts.
Once again, with the crew now inside the medical tent, we don't expect to see them again from the landing site in Kazakhstan. So we did want to go over, though, uh, some of the, the records set uh, the, and the totals and stats for this mission before we do wrap up our coverage. Uh, of course, uh, for Luka Parmitano and Alexander Skvortsov, they launched in uh, July, on July 20th, along with Andrew Morgan from Kazakhstan. So they have a total of 201 days in space for this mission, but how, but this is not either of their first missions. So they have additional additional totals to add that to. For Alexander Skvortsov, he now has racked up 546 days in space over the three flights that he has been a part of. For Luca Parmitano, with two flights, the total comes to 360. Hi, I'm John Grunsfeld, NASA astronaut. Hi, I'm Christy Hansen, Johnson Space Center EVA Task, astronaut training lead and flight controller. And EVA means extravehicular activity, which is just another long way of saying spacewalk. And I got to do eight spacewalks on the Hubble Space Telescope. You might wonder, how did we learn to do the complex tasks using all the cool tools that we used on the Hubble Space Telescope? Christy, how did we learn how to do all of that? So as the EVA task training lead, one of my big duties was to work together with the astronauts for about two years 